What's up, guys? So, you guys see clips of me on social media. Um, you know, there's a lot of videos put out like this that are very short form content. Uh, I'm following behind on YouTube videos where you see a lot of my normal everyday life, um, which is something I need to get back to. And I think a lot of us have bumps along the way, right? A lot of the, our journeys, we're not really sure where we're going all the time. And it's funny because I look back at my journey. I look back at, you know, when did this all start? You know, when did I, and I, I think I started sewing at like f f fucking like four or five years old. I realized that I could express myself artistically in elementary school is when I started sewing. When I was in junior high, I started making my own clothes because I couldn't afford them, but I wanted like cool punk rock clothes and things like that. And then I lost the dream for a while. I came back and I printed t-shirts. I fell in love with fitness and the bodybuilding aspect of fitness. And then we went out and we started this apparel line and then that spidered into everything else and just really exploded. And the journey has been an interesting one. It hasn't been clear. It hasn't, you know, as I'm in it, I, I don't know always what's going on. I just know that I'm on the journey. And I think sometimes I, I lose respect for the journey. And I think that happens to a lot of us because the world's a really confusing place. So that's one of the reasons I put out information like this. That's one of the reasons I put out the short clips. That's one of the reasons I put out YouTube videos and things like that because I know that I've done a lot, right? I, I, one, I know that I'm not done. I know that there's more successful people than me out here. But I know growing up, you know, that was what I did is I looked at people and I thought, cool, let me pull a little piece from that. You know, one of the reasons that I'm sitting in this giant warehouse is because I watched Ninja Turtles when I was really young. I had to look at movies. I didn't know social influencers. I didn't know businessmen. I didn't know pro athletes. I, that was too far away from me. And I used to watch the same video over and over, which was the Ninja Turtles. And I didn't have friends growing up because we lived in the woods. And I always wanted his skateboard park with video games, smoking cigarettes inside warehouse. And that's what I always wanted. And I told my parents, I want to live in a warehouse when I grow up. You know, I want to be able to BMX inside and do all these different things. Like, oh, that's cute. And that slowly got me to here. You know, I don't live in the warehouse, but I could. And it's a really nice warehouse. And I think a lot of us, it's hard to see the vision. It's hard to find people to align with. And that's one of the reasons I started the coaching group, right? My coaching group is called Clear, Calculated, and Vicious, where I encourage you to get clear on your goals, get calculated, figure out who you need to be, what your non-negotiables need to be, you know, what your timelines and what your resources you need to gather are so you, you can act viciously. And I think that's one of the, the really hard things for people is acting viciously, Right. And when I, when I say acting viciously, what I mean is like knowing why you're doing it. So when you're asked a question, it's like, uh, I don't need to think about it. I'll relate it to diet. Diet's the easiest thing. Right. So when you're on a diet and you know that you're on a diet and it's really serious and, and you're fully bought in, you can see what you're going to look like in six months. You can see, hey, I'm going to lose 40 pounds. I'm going to be more active. This is what I do. When someone says, hey, man, do you want to go to McDonald's? It's an easy fucking no. No, I don't because I'm on a diet. I know what I can eat and I know what I can't eat. That's a vicious answer. You just viciously made a decision. And what I want you guys to be able to do is have the confidence to make those vicious decisions all the time. And the only way to do that is to get really clear on your goal. So in the group, we work through a lot of that at length. We do weekly calls and we really, really try to break down what is your goal who do you need to be to get there? You know, first of all, we start with dream and then we get really, really clear on your dream. We get that crystal clear so you know why you're doing it. Then we figure out the puzzle pieces of who you need to be to get you there and then set you up to act viciously. And that's something that you have to keep revisiting and keep doing because things change, right? And it's important to stay on top of yourself and stay motivated. Now, I help in any way that I can. I've been successful throughout real estate, rentals, self-produced music, negotiating contracts, getting sued, working with manufacturers, sourcing six different sub, five different supplement lines, I think, um, how to exit companies, how to start companies, how to work with partners, how to work with your spouse, how to work with your family, how to buy real estate, how to hold real estate, how to sell real estate, right? I've done everything. I own a fitness expo called FitCon, one of the best fitness expos in the world. Um, I own a management company. There's so many different things that I've done setting up an aerospace company that buys, buys and sells airplanes, a hangar, developing hangars, working on storage units, all these different things, having really high quality friendships, a really high quality marriage, 
all those details that I don't really feel comfortable sharing outwardly, right? Like I'm not going to talk about um, business disputes with partners and how I resolve them on here. But behind the paid wall, inside the group where I trust the people where they've put something in so I can put something in equally, uh, we get into a lot of that stuff. But one of the things I want to talk about today is being a, like the hero of your own story, right? And I think that when you're the hero of your own story, like it helps to know that you're on that journey, right? I, and that's something I encourage everyone, right? I think everyone has something inside of them. Everyone has magic. Some people's magic are, they're just pretty. That's great, right? And then some people are like, well, I'm not pretty. I'm not famous. I'm not all these different things. And it's like, yeah, but there's something about you that's really, really, really special that if leveraged properly can make a really big impact. Now, that impact might be financial. That impact might be helping other people. It might be inspiring other people. Who fucking knows what that impact is? But you have a quality inside of you that can make a giant impact. And I think that the way our school set up, the way that our college and our society is set up, it doesn't encourage you to find that thing. It doesn't encourage you to lean into it. So one of the practices I like to do is, you know, you can call it narcissistic, you can call it whatever the fuck you want, but it, it's, it's thinking that you're the hero of the story, right? And in every situation, think of yourself as the hero. Now, <clears throat> I think a lot of people might take that as they always need to be the center of attention. No, you don't. You know, there's been tons of movies where along the journey, the hero has been in the corner watching, right? Or the, the, the hero's been building the storyline by watching other things around him happen, taking notes, looking for the future, figuring out, plotting what relationships he wants to start, you know, how he's going to talk to that girl. A lot of times the story starts with the, the hero of the movie, that girl not noticing him you know, and going on for years and her not noticing and her being the star cheerleader. And then this guy just sitting there watching, taking notes, planning. And I think that's something I always try to remind myself. And it's, I'm reminding myself right now is I'm on the journey, right? So I'm still the hero of the story, but right now just might not be my time to stand in the light, which is uploading YouTube videos, which is really flexing on social, which is being, Hey, I'm the hero of the story. I'm the hero of the story right? The hero always has a time during the journey where he's putting his head down and he's building. There's that little, there's that little montage that's always in Batman, right? Where Batman's just like, and now I'm going to lift weights. And then he goes and it's, it's a six second montage. He does some pull-ups, but he's like going to get jacked or when Rocky goes away, right? Now, granted that's filmed, but Rocky's by himself, training, running, hood up, no one's seeing it. He's still the hero of the story. He's just in a growth phase. He's in a build phase where he's not in the spotlight. Now, <clears throat> the main thing pulling everyone through that is during the journey, they're still the hero, right? They're just not out in front. And I think that we all need to remind ourselves of this. And I think that, I always say I think that. I'm, I'm trying to work, work on not saying that. I try to pay, listen to myself talk and say, D stop saying that. So I think that. Uh, <clears throat> that doesn't mean that, you know, my wife isn't the hero of a story also. It's just she's the hero of her story and it's how our hero journeys work together. And I think it's really important to do that because, it gives you, I talked about in one of my other videos that is either coming out soon or just came out, but I talk about the importance of, you know, having pride in yourself, realizing your value. The more value that you know you have, the more pride you have in yourself, the more that you, you know what your mission is, so you can make really vicious, you know, good decisions that you can stand for, decisions and, and pride that you can stand up and get punched in the mouth, stand up for someone. The more you can do that, the better lives everyone else around you will have. So the more that I know my mission, the more that I'm clear on my vision, I'm clear on my dream of what I'm trying to do and I'm certain of it, I can share that with my wife, with my brother, with my friends, with people I work with, right? So they know what they're dealing with. They can respect my journey, so I respect my journey. And the more that we can all do that, the more empowered everyone is. And next thing you know, you're running with a group of killers, right? You're running with super successful people. All of my friends are super fucking successful, right? Like all my friends are either on their journey of doing really big things, have done really big things, but they're all successful dudes, right? I, I, I didn't grow up with brotherhood. I didn't grow up with a bunch of really dope friends 
I hopped around from group to group. I was the one that was sewing and then showing up a little late to football practice. So I wasn't in with the cool kids uh, at football practice. I was leaving sewing, right? So a sewing class, it's a weird class, but like I used to send my apparel to the fashion show and win the fashion show without being there because I was at football practice. And then I would go to basketball, then I would go to track, but I never really fell into clicks and I never really had that brotherhood. And then in my growth phase, I also didn't have brotherhood. But now that I'm older, I have really successful friends. And I have the luxury of calling those really successful friends and building bonds with them and seeing where our hero, our hero journeys cross. And unfortunately, I don't think a lot of people have that. I don't think a lot of people have really successful friends or friends that are doing it. You know, I know that when I was in my build phase in Reading, Pennsylvania, like I felt more alone than any, ever. Because the more successful I got, I remember the first time I bought, I bought a Cayman, a Cayman S, a Porsche Cayman S. It was $31,000. And I remember no one was happy for me. Everyone hated me because I got a red, uh, uh, it wasn't even a 911, a red Cayman. It was a $30,000 car. It cost a little bit more than like a, a Honda Accord. But I remember people did not like me because of the success. And I felt so alone, right? So alone. And what I had to do is I had to look at the internet. I had to look and I was like, man, there's other successful people on the internet. There's other heroes out there. And the people that were surrounding me didn't feel like heroes. So once again, that's one of the reasons that I made CCV because I wanted to make a group of people that are aware that they're heroes, right? That you can look to, that you can feel a brotherhood or sisterhood to, that you can go in this group and not feel alone, not feel like, you know, you're the only one that's, that's aiming for more, for the longest times, my parents didn't understand what I was doing. They didn't realize until I bought their fucking house. I bought their first house and then I moved them to Montana, full paid in cash. And that's when they understood, oh, like you're an actual businessman. They had never met anyone like that. That can, I retired my mom on month three and then I think three years into business, I purchased their house for $350,000 and said, hey, you live here now. You don't have any more fucking bills. That's when they realized. Dana's parents, they thought I was living on credit cards for the first six or seven years. They're like, there is no way that this is a real thing, right? You don't need people around you to believe in you. You have to believe in your fucking self. And sometimes you need a little bit of support. The people around you might not believe. And if you're on that journey, on that hero journey, you need to surround yourself with like-minded individuals. That's what we have inside Clear, Calculated, and Vicious. If you're interested in signing up, you can sign up. If you're not interested in signing up, that's fine, man. The internet has, it's changed so much since I started. When I started, there wasn't all of this. There wasn't anyone to look to. I had to, you know, look up to people that there was no way I could even get a hold of. Now you can just DM people. But if you're looking for that group, I have that group. I've created it. It's called Clear, Calculated, and Vicious. We can work through it. We can work through your goals. If not, that's fine. But you have to know that you're the hero of your story. Take pride in yourself. Take pride in what you do. Realize that you have a lot of value on this fucking world and on this planet, and you can add a lot of value to the world. So as long as you know that, realize you're the, the, the hero and realize that you might be in a growth phase. You might be in the rocky phase where you're alone in the woods just doing pull-ups and getting jacked, and then you're going to come back and beat everyone's ass. But you're somewhere in there. It's not always standing in the light. Thank you, guys. I appreciate you. If you liked this, if you want more of this, drop me a comment below. Let me know because I'm trying to get a read on what you guys want to hear from me. Uh, and also, like, comment, and subscribe, right? Uh, I never call you guys to subscribe. It's something I need to start doing. A lot of people consume my content, but they don't subscribe. They don't follow. And that's the only way to grow the channel. So appreciate you guys. I'll see you later.